In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Amen. Christ is in our midst. I came across a beautiful quote this week that I'd like to share with you all to begin our, our words today. And it goes like this. Unless we look at a person and see the beauty there is in this person, we can contribute nothing to them. One does not help a person by discerning what is wrong, what is ugly, or what is distorted. Christ looked at everyone he met, at the prostitute, at the thief, and he saw the beauty hidden within them. Perhaps it was distorted, perhaps damaged, but it was beauty nonetheless. And what Christ did was call out this beauty. These words were spoken by a beloved hierarch of the church of the 20th century, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom. And his words ring true for us today, do they not? How easy is it for us to point out what's wrong, what's malformed, what's sick, or what's different in other people? Many times, it's just as easy for us to focus only on our own perceived faults and overlook the inherent value that we each have. I'd like us to remember what we spoke about last week, specifically about the presence of God that's placed in every human person. And that presence of God within each of us conveys an inherent value of magnificence, this beauty that Metropolitan Anthony spoke of that resides in everyone. I'd like us to look at two examples today whose contrast highlights the temptation that humans face between shaming someone and glorifying God within them. The Gospel reading today shows us the leader of the synagogue where Christ was. This man tried to shame Christ for healing a woman who was physically struggling for 18 years. She was bent over And she could not stand upright, is what the gospel says. And this leader of the synagogue, he was very upset because Christ broke the rule, you know. So he tried to shame Christ for this, and he even tried to shame the woman. Can you imagine that? Shaming someone who was suffering for so long, who did not even ask to be healed. Christ healed her out of his love for her. She was stuck in the crossfire of this engagement between Christ and and the leader of the synagogue. This man, he failed to see the beauty that was in this woman. All he could see was a woman who was deemed a sinner and therefore unworthy of his time or his care. Christ, of course, saw himself being reflected within this woman, and Christ allowed her to straighten herself up after a lifetime of both physical pain and social pain. The synagogue leader was unable to help this woman because he cared nothing for her. The epistle reading, on the other hand, is appointed for our beloved Saint Nicholas, a bishop, a shepherd, a pastor, who throughout his whole life, in imitation of Christ, called out this beauty in other people. As a bishop, He was in a similar position to this leader of the synagogue we met in the gospel. But St. Nicholas lived and loved very differently than this other man. We all know the famous story where we get our practice of stocking stuffers from. St. Nicholas saw a family that was beaten down with financial pain. And this family was led to social anxiety. There were three young daughters who did not have the money to be married, and so they were going to be sold into slavery, physical slavery. And St. Paul, or forgive me, St. Nicholas, did not tell them to figure it out for themselves. He didn't tell them that they should have made better choices in their life. No, he took it upon himself to provide the money needed for these women to be married and to live a life of freedom. 
This is what St. Paul means when he teaches us that by bearing one another's burdens, we fulfill Christ's teaching. St. Nicholas, he didn't see a family with a history of poor decisions, but he saw a family of people struggling, people in need of compassion, people who did not know what life was going to look like, people who probably could not see the beauty residing within themselves. St. Nicholas called out their beauty and shared what he could to help them. So for each of us, we may feel beaten down, we may feel broken or anxious or emotionally ugly. We may not see the beauty within ourselves. But Christ does not see these things. Whatever infirmities, whatever sins, whatever suffering, our essence, the essence of who we are as creations of the loving God is untouched by the pain of our life. We are underneath the rubble of our lives, beautiful, each of us. Christ sees our innermost heart, and in that he sees his own image reflected back at him, much the same way that a parent looks upon their child with admiration and care, no matter their choices or the state of their life. Christ helps us because he sees in us an inherent beauty and a value. We must ask ourselves, do we see that value in ourselves? One of my favorite sayings is, you cannot give what you do not have. You can't give what you don't have. How can we call out the beauty in other people if we can't call out the beauty in our own selves? This compassion and self-love, beautiful, God-oriented and directed self-love is what we must do first before we can call out the love and the beauty in others. So this is our task, to find a silent place, to hear the voice of our merciful Lord, his call to our inner and most true self, and allow the beauty that we are to rise and to take its rightful place as our guide and as our mentor, to allow the Spirit of God to transform our pain, to make our suffering into joy, and to empower us to then call out the beauty of others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.